Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parmu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Four terrorists neutralized an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. No chance of economic default, Pakistan's finance minister assures investors. And Taliban bans on women leaves Afghan teachers devastated. And now for all the details, at least four terrorists were neutralized by security forces on Wednesday in Jammu city of the Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The gun battle ensued in Sidra area of Jammu after security officials intercepted a truck having suspicious movement. Officials also managed to recover a huge cache of weapons and ammunition from the encounter site. At least four terrorists were neutralized by security forces on Wednesday in northern Jammu city of the Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The gun battle ensued in Sidra area of Jammu after security forces intercepted a truck having suspicious movement. When the truck was searched, terrorists opened fire on the security personnel, which they retaliated. During the ensuing gunfight, the truck caught fire in which the four terrorists were killed. The driver, however, managed to flee for whom a search operation was underway till the last reports came in. Police also managed to recover a huge cache of weapons and ammunition from the encounter site. Four Atanki who were killed in the truck were killed. Eight big guns were killed, in which there were seven AK-47 and one M4 rifle. There were three pistols were killed. और भी कुछ मैगजीन एमिनेशन और पाउच वगैरह भी बरामद हुआ है मीन वाइल असोशियो पोलिटिकल ग्रुप डोगरा फ्रंट हेल्ड एन एंटी पाकिस्तान रैली इन जम्मू सिटी आफ्टर द इनकाउंटर इंडिया हैज लॉन्ग ब्लेम टेररिस्ट आर एडेड बाय पाकिस्तान टू स्प्रेड अनरेस्ट इन द इंडियन टेरिटरी इस्लामाबाद हाउ एवर डिनाइज दिस एलिगेशन एंड सेज इट ओनली प्रोवाइड्स डिप्लोमेटिक सपोर्ट टू पीपल ऑफ द कश्मीर वैली Cold wave conditions and dense fog continue to make life difficult for people in northern India, with the homeless being the worst hit. As winter is tightening its grip, it has become more challenging for the people living on the roadside to survive the chilly weather. Cold wave conditions and dense fog on Wednesday continued to make life difficult for people in parts of northern India, with the homeless being the worst hit. A thick layer of fog engulfed northern Amritsar city as people faced reduced visibility and biting cold. People stepped out dressed in multiple layers of clothing to protect themselves from the cold. The weather office declares a cold wave in plains of India when the minimum temperature dips to 4 degrees Celsius. A cold wave is also declared when the minimum temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or below and is 4.5 notches below normal. Sir, today is not the same as the weather, but it is not the same as the weather. Today is not the same as the weather. Dense fog in capital New Delhi hit movement of vehicles, leaving people waiting at the bus stations for hours to reach their destinations. For the last few days, the national capital has been witnessing cold wave conditions. The city recorded a minimum temperature of 7.8 degrees Celsius on Wednesday morning. Wrapped in blankets, the homeless slept in the open and lit bonfires to keep themselves warm in Muradabad and Kanpur cities. As winter is tightening its grip, it has become more challenging for the people living on the roadside to survive the chilly weather. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions such as North America, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and often die. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Ishak Dar assured investors on Monday 
that there was no chance Pakistan would default, insisting that the country had a resilient economy. The remarks came as the South Asian nation is in dire need of external financing support, with its reserves depleting and an IMF review pending since September. Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishakdar on Wednesday claimed that whatever tough circumstances the country is facing nowadays, he could prove that it wouldn't default on the economic front. Virtually addressing a gathering of investors at the Pakistan Stock Exchange, the lashed out at the previous PTI-led government and said the rumours about the default were being fanned by those who brought the country to this point. He also assured the current government would complete the IMF program as efforts continue for resumption of a bailout package, a review of which is pending since September. Oh, why can't it default? Hoga? There is no chance that Pakistan will default. Inshallah, Pakistan will survive. We are managing. Huh? A tight position is true. There are 24 billion reserves that we took in 2016. But that is not the government's fault. That is not my fault. Last week, global ratings agency S&P Global cut Pakistan's long-term sovereign credit rating by one notch to reflect a continued weakening of the country's external, fiscal and economic metrics. This year, severe floods, surging food and energy inflation, as well as rising global interest rates are also expected to depress Pakistan's economic and fiscal outcomes with refinancing challenges over the medium term, the report said. Moving on. With the onset of winters, gas crisis has intensified across the Pakistan's economic hub, Karachi City. Residents have complained due to load shedding and low pressure of gas, their day-to-day -day routine is getting affected. The state-owned Sui Gas Company had earlier declared 16 hours of load shedding after days of prolonged hours of unannounced shedding. With the onset of winters, the crisis of gas has intensified across Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi. Residents of the port city have complained. Due to load shedding and low pressure of gas in different areas of the city, their day-to-day -day routine is getting affected. While the domestic consumers are relying on expensive food from local eateries, hotel owners in Karachi have complained. They are also facing issues due to the gas shortage. We request the government to provide us some relief in gas bills, a hotel owner said. Sui Southern Gas Company, a semi-government-owned company, had earlier this month announced 16 hours load shedding. It is ensuring gas supply during meal hours. As per the Prime Minister's directives, the company tweeted, Pakistan's gas reserves are depleting fast while the supplies are shrinking. The country mostly meets its energy demands through imported and indigenous resources. In news from Afghanistan, following bans by the Taliban-led administration on women attending universities or working for humanitarian aid groups, a female educator has expressed disappointment and has urged the international community to provide continued support and draw attention to their plight. The Taliban took over Afghanistan in August 2021 and has imposed policies severely restricting basic rights, particularly those of women and girls. Bakshi, a female educator in Afghanistan, on Tuesday said that she was disappointed following bans by the Taliban-led administration on women attending universities or working for humanitarian aid groups. Afghanistan's Taliban-run higher education ministry on December 20 suspended access to universities for female students until further notice, a move which has drawn strong condemnation from the US, Britain and the United Nations. The Taliban, however, said that the move was justified because some women had not adhered to their interpretation of the Islamic dress code for women. Bakshi urged the international community to provide continued support and draw attention to their plight.
شان واقعا سمیمانه و از اماق قلب خود می خواهیم ارگیز امید خود از دست نتن و خاطر حقی که خدا برش داده خاطر حقی که بالاخره دین ما برشان داده و خاطر حقی که یک انسان باید داشته باشه مجادله داشته باشن روی کرد داشته باشن و هرگز و هرگز تسلیم نشوان از دیدگاه ما The Taliban took over Afghanistan in August 2021 and has imposed policies severely restricting basic rights particularly those of women and girls. Taliban decrees prohibit women from traveling unless accompanied by a male relative and require women's faces to be covered in public including women's TV newscasters. No foreign government has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development leading to greater insecurity poverty and isolation in news from nepal nepal's president vidya devi bhandari on the recommendation of the newly formed government has called the new session of both houses of the parliament on january 9 cpn maoist center chairman and new nepal prime minister pushp kamal dehel who took office on monday has formed an eight member cabinet with three deputy prime ministers The senior most member of the House of Representatives, Pashupati Shamsher J. B. Rana, who administered the oath of office to newly elected members, will chair the meetings until a new speaker is elected. As per the constitution, the speaker and the deputy speaker should be elected within 15 days of the first meeting of the parliament. Meanwhile, reports suggest the election commission has started preparations of presidential election to be held by February 11. The term of the incumbent president will end on 13th of March. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Tuesday inaugurated a five exchange program in India's Bodh Gaya town to bolster ties between followers of Pali and Sanskrit traditions of Buddhism. A senior monk said the program will help in harmony among the sects of Buddhism and its expansion. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama on Tuesday inaugurated the Pali and Sanskrit International Bhikkhu Exchange program which aims to bolster ties between followers of Pali and Sanskrit traditions in India's eastern holy city of Bodh Gaya. During the inaugural ceremony monks were seen praying to Lord Buddha's idol as they recited hymns in Pali and later the Heart Sutra which is a philosophy from the Mahayana sect of Buddhism. A senior monk said the 5-year program will go on till 2027 and will help in the expansion of Buddhism and communal harmony among its sects. Uh, there is a something slight differences between the uh, Theravada or Mahayana. That this or uh, those differences not to uh, what do you say misunderstand. We organize this one by blessing of his holiness the dalai lama actually it was his wishes and we launched today five years plan 2022 to 2027 this uh, exchange program will help uh, to uh, spread or grow up more buddhist world the dalai lama belongs to gelupa one of the largest and most influential tradition of tibetan buddhism which is rooted in the mahayana buddhism Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again Four terrorists neutralized an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir No chance of economic default Pakistan's finance minister assures investors And Taliban bans on women leaves Afghan teachers devastated. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.